Oh, big news for my family. My uncle, who's in his 40s, recently started dating a girl in her 20s. And then when I mentioned to my dad, that that's like, you know, maybe kind of a big age gap. He hit me with this saying. He goes, well, half your age plus seven. And then he turned up the radio so we'd stop talking about it. Half your age, for those of you who don't know, um, half your age plus seven. It means that an age gap is chill as long as the younger person is at least half your age plus an additional seven years. And look, I don't know, call me new fashioned, but uh, if you need algebra to explain why your girlfriend is not too young for you, you're a pedophile. Uh, <laughs> You just confront a guy, you're like, hey, not to be rude, but is your date a literal child? He's like, not if you know the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> I'm like, I, no judgment, like literally date whoever you want. It doesn't like that's going around a lot though. Like a friend of mine told me that she's dating a guy who's 30 years older than her. And then before I even reacted in any direction, she goes, oh, but don't worry, I'm not dating him for his money. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's, actually way weirder if you're dating him for any other reason. <laughs> Just like, oh, you have an older boyfriend? Is that because he buys you nice things? No, it's because stories about the Gulf War turn me on. <laughs> See, I am from the Midwest. It is tough to spot other people from the Midwest because the giveaways are there, but they're very subtle. Like even I, I'll meet people and they'll be like, did you know I was from the Midwest? And I'll be like, no, no way, I totally can't tell. And then they'll be like, also, did you know if you mix red wine with Sprite, it's basically champagne? And I was like, now I can tell, there it is. Uh, one thing that people in California do say a lot when I tell them I'm from the Midwest, and it's very California and it's very New York, is that they'll be like, I wish I was in the Midwest, because I'm a Midwest nine, but a California four. In the Midwest, I'm a million dollars. Here, I'm just a pile of haunted pennies. And it's like, I don't know where this idea came from that everyone in the middle of the country is just like way uglier than people on the coast. But it's not true. Like we have very hot people in the middle of this country. It's just that the opportunities for those hot people are a little different there than they are in like New York or LA. Like if you're hot in New York, you can walk the runway at a fashion show. And if you're hot in the Midwest, you can head up a pyramid scheme. It's like LA hot might get you into show business, Midwest hot will get you into white collar crime. Like I went to high school with this girl, oh my God, she was fine. But she had a dad named Brent. Brent was in his mid fifties. I'm here to tell you, you'd never know it. Brent kept it tight. Brent had a tan, Brent had a strong jaw. Brent wore very nice suits. And my sophomore year, Brent went to prison for running a nationwide funeral scam in which he sold luxury burial plots to dying millionaires. And then when they actually died, he would bury them in worthless graves and pocket the difference. I know exactly two things about Brent. I know that he's a sociopath who deserved to go to prison, and I know I'd get butterflies if he kissed me. <laughs> I don't know, growing up in Missouri, my dad owned a lot of guns, he always did. And sometimes people will hear that and they'll be like, oh, well, did your dad owning guns make you more comfortable around firearms? And it's like, no, but it did make me less comfortable around my dad. <laughs> Look, I was around guns my whole childhood and nothing ever happened, but, but that doesn't mean it was safe. Like one time, nine years old, I was home alone and I was watching a Western on TV and they all looked so cool with those old timey revolvers. And then I remembered, wait a minute, my dad's got a modern day revolver in the middle console of his truck. And so nine years old, I took my dad's spare keys, I unlocked his truck, I pulled the revolver out of the middle console. And then to be like the Cowboys, I cocked the revolver. And as soon as I did that, I was like, I should not have cocked this revolver. And I panicked, and what did I do? I put the cocked gun back in the middle console, and then that's the end of the story. Uh, I never told anyone, it never came up, it's 20 years later, and to everyone else, I had a totally normal, stress-free childhood, but only I know I was almost on the news. I was a speed bump away from my entire family being on the news.